Hey everybody and welcome to Mediocre Gamers where we discuss all things gaming. I'm Caleb. I'm RJ. And I'm Crimson. Now we've been off for a few weeks due to the holidays, but we're back now. However, WTFFG will remain on hiatus due to some scheduling conflicts and just real life events. Um, any new developments on the Fantasy Flight game side will be briefly discussed on our main show here until further notice, though. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for understanding that. Um, but with that aside, Crimson, what have you been playing for the past couple of weeks? Well, I've actually been um, playing two very different games from each other. Um, I'll get into ESO first, which is Elder Scrolls Online. Um, a while back, they had their Morrowind um, expansion, and... I originally bought into this game, you know, pre-ordered Imperial Founders Edition and everything like that. I tried it. I wasn't really satisfied with it. I'm not one of those people, well, it didn't feel like Skyrim type person, but it just, it felt too wow. And if I'm going to play something that feels like wow, I'm going to go play wow. So I put it off to the side and then Morrowind came out and I tried it for a little bit and I liked it a lot better, but... I ended up getting into, like, Destiny 2 and a couple other games. Well, I've recently come back to it, and I have to say, it's much, much more improved. It almost feels like a good mix between, you know, World of Warcraft or Guild Wars 2. Um, just the skills, the, the mechanics of the game feel really strong and very different from WoW. So, it's definitely a game that I've been really just enjoying and playing around on a very casual level. Um, it is free to play. Um, so anybody can pick it up. Unfortunately, Mar the Marwin part is not free to play, but the one Tamriel is free to play. Um, so definitely something worth looking into, maybe checking out some YouTube videos. It definitely has progressed a lot with the... Um, changes to life stuff. So did they, you said it was free to play whenever I've looked at it, it always has like where I have to buy the game. Did they change that? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the base game, it, it's free to play. Like uh guild wars is free to play. It's, I, I guess it's called pay to play. Okay. Or pay once to play. Okay. So you like, you buy the base game, but there's not a monthly fee on it. Correct. They do have the option for a monthly fee, but it doesn't really... It's a really weird monthly fee. Um, okay. So I, th I think it costs 15 bucks, but then it gives you $15 worth of crowns or the currency for their store. Um, m most of their stuff is cosmetic. Um, e even the houses are cosmetic. So if you, if you buy a house, you, you, can't put, you can't store items in the house. Okay. You can get items for the house that are specifically like furniture that is meant for the house, and you can get crafting stations and stuff like that. Okay, but you can't like have a chest full of items like Skyrim or something like that, uh, um, okay. because they didn't want to make houses necessary. Um, and then you also get a free house in the game. Period. Um, but yeah, the the monthly fee. The the real reason why people get the monthly fee is for two reasons. If you have, if you do pay the monthly fee, you get access to all the like DLC stuff, not Morrowind. Morrowind's an expansion, but all the other stuff. So the Thieves Guild, the Brotherhood, uh, the Dark Brotherhood, the Arena, those little DLCs that they have there, or you can just buy them. Um, so either which way, and then the real reason why people pay the monthly fee is for the crafting bag. So crafting mats no longer take up weight, and that is the only real benefit to the monthly fee. Other than that, completely free to play. Interesting. You do not have to buy a single item off of that crown store. Okay. Well, that's actually pretty cool. See, I thought it had the monthly fee was built in like, wow. It used to be when it first came out. Okay. Well, I'm glad they changed that. And, yeah. They, they, they realized their mistake there. They And you know, I think they have loot boxes, but it's one of the few 
times I've never felt the need to buy them because again, it's purely cosmetic stuff. And I'm like, I oh, well, why do that when I could just buy the cosmetic stuff I want? So, you know, they're doing loot boxes, how we suggest it. If you're going to do loot boxes, still give me the option to buy the same items, you know, outside of the loot box, which is nice. But I think it, it, it would be cheaper if you got, you know, items out of the loot box than buying them straight up. But, you know, again, I'm like, I only want this one item or whatever, you know. I got so you. I haven't bought a single loot box, and that tells you something because <laughs> I'm a gambler. That says a lot. <laughs> I have issues with loot boxes. Um, but, yeah, very fun game. And this weirdly enough, the game that I've been playing the most, like – like probably way too much, probably destiny level, probably, you know, make my friends have an intervention is world of warships. Now, thankfully it won't kill my bank account, but I have been really enjoying playing world of warships. Uh, they brought out a PVP style of game called operations. And, those are super fun. I mean, just unbelievable fun. And they're hard. It's not like Armored Warfare where it's just like, oh, easy mode. No, these things are hard. and But they give you more XP for doing the operations, which is the one thing that, you know, like Armored Warfare didn't do. Armored Warfare gave you less XP for doing the PvP stuff. So it's very, very, very fun. And they did announce that they're getting rid of the Missouri. It will come back next, you know, in a year. They're going to rotate between the Missouri and the Mishuta, the, uh, the Yamato sister ship. Well, I'm a U.S. ship guy, so I'm grinding for the Missouri, and I unlocked it today. I jumped on, played my, my one game. Because they do that, you know, the first game you play, you get extra rewards. I jumped on, play, played one match, got my extra re rewards, finally finished off that grind. And now I have a beautiful Missouri battleship, the Mighty Mo. That's fucking awesome. Oh, dude, it's it's the sexiest, fat-ass beast I've ever seen. <laughs> Very nice. Yes. Is, it a, that is that ship Has thick? a big old butt. <laughs> is it a thick ship it, with two Cs? It has a big old booty. I'm telling you, man. Like <laughs> you look at that deck on the back, and you're like, you could you could put another turret there, guys. <laughs> oh my god, that deck is not a big old booty. <laughs> that deck, oh. but those those guns. That's awesome. Oh, uh, it's just a beautiful ship, and it's been weird. Like I haven't even been playing like high rank stuff. I've been playing mid tier stuff. You know the e like. Like, a new player would take probably a day to get, well, maybe two days to get to, like, Tier 4 or Tier 5. And I've been playing a lot of Tier 4, a lot of Tier 5, and a lot of Tier 6. Because there's there's just more people there. The ships are, honestly, a little bit more fun. Because they're not so overpowered. Um, so you don't have Yamatos and Montanas and Iowas and, you know... Uh, Duke, well, you have Duke of Yorks, but you, you don't have, like, Conquerors and stuff. It's really fun, and I've always enjoyed naval ships, and I enjoy the history of, you know, battleships. I find them to be entertaining and fascinating, and I love them. So, it's a really good game. It, it can kill you on the wallet book if you, like, I'm just going to buy premium ships and play nothing but premium. Well, don't, don't do that, because 90% of the time... You're going to be looking at a premium ship. So say you're like uh, the Alabama. It's a tier eight American battleship. Well, you can go through the line, like the actual like progression tree, get to the the North Carolina, which is also a tier eight. Uh, the Alabama is a North Carolina class battleship. And so there's the same class battleship. The only difference is, you can buy upgrades for your North Carolina to make it better where the Alabama is just the stock. And 
So a lot of times the, the free ships are better than the, the pay for ships. The difference is the pay for ships get you to those high tiers early. Well, there's no reason to be there because most of the funds around tier five and six. So that's kind of what I've been doing. Okay. That's, it sounds pretty awesome. I remember um, playing armored warfare with you and, that was actually a lot of fun. And I've watched a couple of your videos that you did for world of warships and it looks great. It looks like just a fun game, but it doesn't look like something that I would be interested in enough to play to the point of getting good. Cause it seems extremely skill based and I do yeah, not I'll... have vehicle skills. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the skill is, for me, just, just a general tip for anybody out there, how I do my aiming is if it's a battleship, I do a one for one lead. So if it's 14, you know, 14 kilometers away, I lead it 14 little knocks forward. Now, if it's a uh, cruiser, they're generally faster. So I double the lead. If it's a destroyer, well, I just go the other way. Gotcha. <laughs> womp womp. Fair enough. <laughs> what well, sounds like you've been having some pretty good gaming uh, in uh, the absence of everyone during the holidays. Uh, I, on the other hand, have been playing a kind of a grab bag of everything. Uh, where Crimson has been able to focus on two games, I haven't been able to really land on anything. Just kind of bits and pieces. Um, I have been playing The Division a lot after Destiny took a nice big steaming dump on everything. Uh, I ended up going back to The Division, and it's better than I remember it. And I don't know, it's just, it scratches the itch that I think we were looking for in Destiny. It really is better. Like, I gotta play it for a little bit, but I've been, like... In my YouTube feed, I'm just been, you know, these Destiny people that I've been following have been posting Division videos, and I've been watching them, and they look good. So definitely something that I'm getting more interested in doing, too. I just wish I had a little bit more time to play while standing up. Um, but, yeah, it's it's definitely looks fun. Yeah, it, and that's the weird thing is I didn't really expect it to be – that good going back in. I was like, meh, whatever. We haven't played the division in a while. So I jumped in on the division and I'm like, oh, they just dropped the patch 1.8 and introduced two new zones and a new game type, which is resistance mode. And which is uh, basically zombies from uh, Call of Duty. Like you fight waves and waves and waves of dudes. You get resources. You use those resources to open caches, to replenish your ammo and med packs and stuff, and to open doors, just like in zombies. And it's, it's just been really cool. I haven't got to do the resistance mode because we just hit max level last night. But... Uh, it also introduced an actual PvP mode, which is four on four, uh, without the NPCs running around like in the dark zone. And that's, I'm not really interested in that, but I have been running in the dark zone and it's kind of been a mixed bag of nonsense. Um, it was fun when I was around 14 to 19, but. After we hit max level, we went back in, and there's a lot more assholes in there. Oh, no. And I... Yeah. Like, I've been getting ganked more often than not. And that hasn't been fun. Now, running as a group is not quite as bad. Interesting. Uh, but, now, is... It, it, is that prone to... Like getting ganked is that is that prone very often to where you are right now? Because I'm assuming you're well from what you were talking about the other day. Is that in the dead dead zone? The dark zone. Dark zone. Okay. Yep. And it, that's the interesting thing. Like there is a huge open world map, and in the center of that map is the dark zone. 
You actually have to go through a checkpoint, re-instance, and then you go into the dark zone. And it does have, like, level tiers. And once you hit 30, which is max level, it has gear level tiers that it, that it puts you in. But the gear level tiers at max level are pretty forgiving. Like, they're wide. So, like, I was gear score, like, 182. And it was putting me where I would be seeing players who can kill me that had over 200 gear score. So a two or a 20 gear score difference, which is massive. Ugh. That sounds awful. Cause the gear score is actually kind of like destinies where I think the max right now is 280 in division. So roughly the same as destiny and it feels about that difference like if somebody's got 10 power on you you're fucked and how the dark zone kind of screws people is you go out you get gear and then you have to go and extract it well you have to go to one of the helipads which are marked on the map and when you shoot the flare up to call in the extraction chopper it takes almost two minutes for the chopper to get there and a minute for it to leave once it uh has your bag and you can be sabotaged at that point. Ugh. But it also marks it on the map in like these the zone flashes where there's an extraction happening. So if any player hits M and opens up the map, like, oh, somebody's extracting, you know, down the street from us, and then they can go and fuck everyone over. So <sighs> It's, but you can do the same to other people, you, too. You can. The thing is, is if you go rogue, which you cannot accidentally do anymore, originally it was basically just friendly fire was on, and if you accidentally shot another player or purposely did, it automatically made you go rogue, which marks you on the map, and people can literally hunt you down. It puts a timer over your head, and if um, you kill someone else, it multiplies the timer like it adds another minute on there and another minute and another minute so you either have to kill and run and hide or not really hide because they can just find you but you basically have to kill and run until your timer runs out or you're gonna have to die for that timer to go away so it feels like oh that seems balanced like then everybody just gangs up on that guy that's not really the case it's more like this guy has pretty high tier gear and he's like right at the edge of going to the next bracket so he just sits there and bullies everyone and we've had a couple instances of that most of our experience has been fun like going in and having the intensity of not knowing if somebody's going to try to kill you and then somebody trying to kill you and having three of us there to just beat their asses into the ground that's fun but it's the people who kind of exploit the engine of, oh, hey, I'm as powerful as I can be in this bracket, and the gap is huge. So I have a really good chance of just killing everyone in the zone and just camping the spot. So killing people, not taking their gear, waiting for them to come back, and then killing them again. Yes. Typical online assholes. Yeah, that sounds... That, that doesn't sound... That doesn't sound like it would be a lot of fun, but everybody sounds like they keep going back, so there has to be something there. There has to be a draw there. Loot. Well, and the best loot. You also, go ahead. Ah. Yeah, you don't have to go into the dark zone until you're ready to go into ah, the dark yeah. zone. Okay. It, like okay. You're not forced to go into that area. Yeah. It's basically like a separate open world map, and it's it is connected to the to the main like co-op zones, but you don't have to go in there. You actually can play the entire game without ever going into the dark zone, yeah. but you can. And that's the cool thing is like we went in at about level 16 and the gear is good. Like you rank up in the dark zone separately. So you stop gaining experience and you start gaining dark zone experience. When you get higher dark zone levels, then you can open bigger chests at level 15, which takes like an hour I mean, it's really quick. You can open the big chest, which guarantee epics. 
you get two epics per chest, which is huge. Because before we went into the Dark Zone, we all had blues at best and mostly greens. Just shit items. We ended up farming the Dark Zone around that level for a night, maybe four hours, five hours or so. Walked out with insane amounts of epics. We were completely geared out, and we basically just were able to steamroll everything in the co-op stuff. We were actually cranking the difficulty up just to have something to do. <laughs> but it's nice. It, it has the draw of being easier to get stuff in the Dark Zone, but it's the high-risk, high-reward type thing. Uh, going in solo is honestly a death wish now. But going in as a group, three to four people, it's a lot more fun, and people don't fuck with you as much. But when you were lower level, you could go in there solo and be okay? Oh, yeah. Easy. Like at the 14, 19 range? Oh, yeah. And even up to about 25. Basically, any time until you hit 30, because once you hit 30, items stop dropping as a, this is a level 30 item, and it drops as gear score. So, like, I'm getting, like a uh, level 212 item dropped. Kind of like how Destiny has theirs. Like, it turns from level, uh, like, level requirement gear to power-leveled gear. And it makes more sense when you see it in the game than me explaining it, but it basically changes um, the stats over. It makes sense. Okay. I mean, I, I get that. Yeah. Because we play Destiny. Sure. Uh, but, as uh, dark, dark Zone aside... The game is fun. The story is actually pretty cool. I like the plot. Uh, I wish that it would have focused a little heavier on the story, like better storytelling of the plot. But it still did really good. It's fun. The end boss was a fucking nightmare. I, I We literally were like, I don't even know if I want to play this game. <laughs> Ugh, but wow. we ended we, it's a helicopter, oh, and gosh. you don't have explosives. No! Yeah, it took us three or four tries before we heard, because he, the dude says it really quietly, that you can arm the turrets again, and the turrets will start shooting at the helicopter, which the helicopter just kills the turrets, but it gets a little bit of extra damage in. But it is a nightmare. That fight took it about ten minutes. And we got him to where he was almost dead, and then we died and had to reset all the way back to square one. Oh. But it, it sucked. It was a long boss fight. But we got through that. We finished the campaign. And then we're like, okay, well, what do we do now? And just all of this shit started popping up. Dailies, weeklies, um, search and destroy missions which give you uh, a currency so that you can spend that currency on buying bounty missions and bounty missions give you uh, shit loads of really good gear. And they are basically go to this zone and kill this boss. Uh, there are rifts in Diablo, which is the underground. You literally go into a, a randomly generated subway system. You fight your way to the boss. You kill the boss. You get a big old box of loot and you fuck off. Like it's, there is more content for in-game than there is content for not in-game. It is crazy. And you still get incentivized to go back and do all the old side quests, regardless of the level. You are incentivized to pick up all the collectibles and replay missions. And it's... I'm like, holy crap, this game... I, th I thought this game ended, like, at the 20-hour mark at best. And we've got or I had 39 hours, I think, before we beat the campaign. I now have 79 hours on the game, and I don't even have a single exotic item. I have yellow items, which are high-end, but that's it. Um, but Division aside, I, RJ, I would love for you to look at that game at some point. I think you would love it, because it is a tactical third-person shooter that feels right up your alley. It's all the good things about Destiny and all the good things about Diablo thrown into a third-person cover shooter. One of the things that the developer said 
when they had talked to the, uh, watched an interview on the developer mm-hmm. and he's like, look, I want to make this super important. I want everybody to understand this. This is an RPG. Yep. Not a shooter because bullet sponge is the word that is thrown around the most yep. on this game. Oh yeah. And it's, it, like, Bullet Sponge isn't that bad. Like, you play Diablo, yeah, you know, you're whacking Diablo with a sword over and over and over, and you're not chopping off limbs or anything. Yep. You're just taking away health. But as humans, when we see somebody get shot in the head, we expect them to die immediately. Yep. <laughs> but this game is an RPG, not a shooter. It's a shooter second. Yep. And it, it feels like, to me specifically, that... It, the the enemies in the division are more bullet spongy than in Destiny. Destiny's guys had they were bullet sponges, but not as bad. They struck a very delicate balance. But this is exactly what the division feels like. It's sacrificed on the combat, on the on the specific uh, shooting gameplay, but it has probably. It, conservatively, 60 hours worth of solid content. Minus the actual super grind of doing shit for hours and hours and hours trying to get the specific gear you want. Destiny had great shooter gameplay. It had some of the best gunplay I've ever seen or experienced, and it had no content to back it up. So, The Division is the polar opposite of Destiny, and it's exactly what I needed. I wish that the gunplay was better, but for the amount of content, the enjoyment, and the diversity of stuff you can do, I am not looking to go back to Destiny again. (laughs) But we'll get into that later. Uh, On the other list, the brief list of what else I've been playing, uh, Pyre, which is basically three-on-three demon soccer. Uh, it's fun. It's a lot more fun than it sounds. Um, Metal Gear Solid Five, Killing Floor Two, Homefront: The Revolution, Call of Duty: World at War, and some Battlefield Four. And we'll get into details about those and our my experiences with those on a later episode. Right now, I wanted to focus on the division because it's been a blast. I recommend people pick that up and play it with us. And you do have a video out there of Metal Gear Solid and Pyro, so. If people want to see you play it a little bit, they can definitely check out the video on the YouTube channel. Yes, and I do apologize for the audio quality in the Pyre video. I'm probably going to delete that one and upload a new one. For some reason, I was trying to tweak my mic settings, and the game volume was just insanely loud. But if you want to at least see what it looks like, it is beautiful. Check it out. Same with Metal Gear Solid Five. If you like kind of hokey stealth games that are actually still really good and have tons of content. It's amazing. And also you don't have to do stealth. So even you would enjoy some of it. Crimson, not much of it, but some of it. (laughs) Crimson's a very anti-stealth gamer. I'm a, there's a reason why I like my bro so much. (laughs) I don't do stealth. I can run in, level up stuff. (laughs) That, that is entirely fair. Um, RJ, what have you been playing? Uh, well, uh, before the holidays started, I was wrapping up on my experiences with Destiny 2, um, just kind of getting one last hoorah with it uh, at the time being. Um, but then I went on vacation uh, with my family, and I did. I brought my... Uh, laptop, which is a Royal POS that can't d- really do anything. So it was literally just there to watch YouTube videos and check my email once in a while. Um, but I did have my smartphone and I was able to dive into Eternal for a little bit. And in the interim, we have a new set that was released, the Dusk Road. And we've got a l- huge spike in the card pool. And I think with three sets in Eternal, it's in a good spot. There's a lot of variety in the card pool. There's a lot of interactions with the new cards with the old cards, and they've introduced many different themes. Um, 
And a couple of the keywords that they have introduced are Scout, which is, is essentially Scry from Magic the Gathering. When you play a card that has Scout, you look at the top card of your library, you leave it on the top or put it on the bottom. It lets you, it's, it's a filter utility, which is really good. The game uh, had some of that built in already, but as with any digital card game, they have added this scout keyword and they can retroactively fix all of the old cards and be like, okay, this phrase me now means scout, done, over with. Don't have to worry about it. So that's been pretty cool. So scout or really any mechanic that lets you filter your deck is awesome. So that mechanic has a thumbs up in my book. Um, there's different ally effects for different creatures that you play. So like uh, al ally Valkyrie, when you play a Valkyrie or have another Valkyrie in play or Gunslinger, you get some sort of effect with the character that has ally. Uh, so that has been really interesting. Um, it's added a lot of variety and really forced now kind of forces a little bit of the tribal theme, which is really well flushed out in this game. Uh, there are gunslingers, there are explorers, there are yetis, there are dinosaurs, there are valkyries. It is the, the creature base and the lore in this game uh, with these creature factions is really, really cool. So we're about to see a lot of tribal decks that take advantage of their keywords, um, especially allies. So that's really cool. Um, and then the last keyword that was introduced is Nightfall. Uh, this is probably the one that I was the most excited about, uh, but I think I think the jury is still out on this one. Um, essentially, the way Nightfall works, uh, the, it turns night uh, for the rest of your turn, your opponent's turn, and then back to your turn. And then at the start of the turn, when it is night, you draw a card and take a damage. And this is really good for card draw and maybe some other corner effects or pocket effects, especially with the new tribe unseen. Um, they're basically just a bunch of ninjas that do really cool things at night. Uh, but it kind of forces that mechanic. And I think my biggest thing that I don't like about this mechanic is it rewards your opponent first in the terms of the card draw, which if you've played Magic the Gathering, that can make or break a game if you give your opponents free cards. Um, but so that's my brief rundown on the mechanics uh, that they've introduced. But with really just a variety of the card pool, I've experimented and upgraded several decks. Um, I've built a new blue black flyers, which is still really solid, very simple at its core, which has been awesome. I've upgraded my Makato Armory deck, which is a red, green, and black deck that uses the um, different armory cards that you put on your avatar and just start beating face with that. Uh, that's been really cool, especially one particular card that I think has really caused quite a splash, uh, which is called the Throne Warden. It's a five-cost uh, green creature. He's 4-4, four -four, has Aegis. And when summon, when you play Throne Warden, you gain four armor. So he's just a sturdy body with Aegis and gives you free health, which is really, really good, um, especially in an armory deck. Um, and I've really been just kind of doing my dailies, gaining my one win a day, get that gold, get that free pack, get those new cards. Like I've said in the past, I love cracking packs. So this... It's been awesome to reignite this eternal kick and get back into this game. So that's been a lot of fun. And um, the other game that I have been playing kind of was born out of my um, the, the bad experience towards the end of Destiny. And that's kind of, I needed to something to fill my loot grinding itch. And I was looking through many forums, and a bunch of them said, this game called Warframe is a lot better. And I'm like, huh, well, what is Warframe? Caleb's mentioned this before, so I, uh, I gave it a look. And Warframe, if you are unfamiliar with it, is a free-to-play, third-person, cooperative shooter. Um, 
and it's also a resource grind game. And it's a this think ninjas in space. You heard me right, ninjas in space. It is. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Ninjas in space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, I didn't really know what to think about it, especially with the space ninja theme. I was honestly a little skeptical with it because I think I'm a little bit more of a traditionalist. But uh, after a few hours, I'm definitely sold. Uh, there's just a huge variety of content with this game. Um, each of your different Warframes, there it's a different suit of armor that gives you different abilities. And um, there's, gosh, I don't even remember how many there are. There's over 30 Warframes, uh, which is really cool. So there's a lot of variety in that sort of gameplay. Um, each of the nodes on the star map are different. Um, and essentially, each node has a different game type. You can have either exterminate where you need to run in there and just kill all the bad guys you've got um do, 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 do. you've got a, a defense mission where you're trying to defend a central point against waves upon waves it's essentially a horde mode um there is a spy mission where you have to sneak through a restricted area not trip any alarms and extract the information that's at the very end of that um, and each of these, and there's many more, there's, I think, at least 20 different game modes. Um, several of them can be kind of grouped together, but they each have a purpose. Um, one of them is useful for getting uh, your experience for your Warframe, or one is useful for getting in-game credits, or the resources around the game to build the different weapons and armors that you need. So there's everything has a purpose. Um, and really, one of the last things that I wanted to just touch on briefly was the kind of the modding system. Um, what the mods are, there's there are different cards that you pick up throughout the game. Uh, they give you a stat bonus like plus 10% health or plus 10% armor. But you can upgrade those to get bigger bonuses. And there... In that sense, you have all of these different options, and then you can use those to um, to personalize a weapon or a warframe or whatever you want to your exact playstyle, which is extremely, which is really cool. And the amount of control that they give to you there is really, really a nice change of pace. Now, I'm going to assume since it's a uh, free-to-play game, all those stat bonus bonuses, all those uh, Warframes, all those things that you really want to make yourself better, those are all in loot boxes, right? Actually, spoilers, they are not. The way that you unlock these different uh, Warframes or weapons, you actually build them in the game by collecting the resources and a blueprint that you buy with, sure. From the marketplace with in-game currency. Shut the fuck up. Come on. We both know all free-to-play games, they just want your money. They're going to make you gamble to be able to do any... No free-to-play game is going to give you good items with in-game currency. Hey, no retail-priced game will give you fucking items that you want without <laughs> using loot boxes. Look at fucking Destiny. There's no way that this free-to-play game doesn't fall on that crutch. You're lying to us, RJ. You're lying to us. Um, well, I would have to defend myself and say, no, that I'm not lying, and maybe we could uh, play a game together, and I will show you. And better yet, listeners, I'm going to make you a promise. I am, This week, I will make you a video that explains very briefly what this game Warframe is about, a little bit of what you can do, and it will be my promise that I will upload a video. I made it public. I'm going to stick to my word. So, there it is. Awesome. And I do have it installed, and I have messed with Warframe very briefly. I think I just played the first two missions. It's It was really fun. 
It's a little intimidating at first because there's so many things. Like, there's a whole bunch of different weapons and there's a whole bunch of different planets to go to and stuff like that. But I want to dive into this game. It seems really cool. Does anybody know if the servers are cross-play? So, like, I have it on my PlayStation 4 and I would like to play it there. But would... Does anybody know if the PC and the PlayStation are cross-played? That is a good question. I unfortunately don't know off the top of my head. I will make a note, and we'll have to look into that. But, uh, yeah, we'll... Uh, it is not currently cross-platform. Uh, curses. Thousand Damn. curses. Yep. I, think it'd be fun. I just think it'd be a fun game with controllers since a lot of melee combat. Uh, it's actually a little bit of a balance between both. Uh, from what I've seen, there is a heavy emphasis on gunplay and melee. Yes, I I would agree with that assessment. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the so the cool thing is I'm only uh, well two two things and then and then we'll move on. The um, to mention to to pick up what you were saying earlier, Caleb. Uh, yes, the tutorials they're not really the best. Um, it kind of throws this modding system at you and then just kind of gives you a brief, okay, this is how it sort of works. And then it kind of leaves you to it. Or it's like, here's the marketplace where you can, you have the option to spend real money to get this other stuff. Uh, or, but it doesn't tell you is like, oh, well, just look over here. You can find the blueprints that you need to uh, build things. So they don't really do a good job of teaching you that, but this game has been out for, I want to say, three or four years. There is no aspect of this game that has not been looked at, polished, tweaked, touched, what have you. So they have really, the developers have really put their time and effort into making this game the best that they can, it can be. Um, and they are still giving that to us to this day. Um, they're like, I'm continuously blown away with the amount of content that they're with this game. I'm about 36 hours in. I'm still on my very first frame. I have my second one in the oven right now. It should be finished in, I want to say it should be finished on Wednesday. Um, because when you build an item or a warframe, it takes real time and the longest thing to sit in the foundry um, to build is a Warframe. It takes three days, three full days to build. Um, but that's real time. So my second frame will be ready on Wednesday. Um, I have only have access to four out of the 16 planets, and I'm slowly working my way through that. So I'm 36 hours in, and I haven't hit hardly any sort of in-game content yet. I'm There's still so much more to go. So... Um, that's really been kind of what I've been doing the past couple weeks. Um, and man, I just, I can't sing enough praise about Warframe. It just really scratches that itch of a good loot grinding game. Um, and really has a lot of mechanical depth, which is what I personally enjoy a lot. Unlike some other games, uh... <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, there, there's definitely an elephant in the room, and let's just not beat around the bush anymore. Uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about the fall of Destiny 2. And, oh, boy, this, is, this has been a journey. That's all that I can say. It's been a journey. A um, very short one. Yeah. A very short one. About, mm, I don't know, four, four and a half hours worth of content journey. Uh huh. I Man, you guys keep saying journey, and now I just want to listen to uh, "City by the Bay." Right? I know, right? <laughs> oh my gosh! <sighs> Which is longer I mean, than a uh, Destiny Two DLC? Yep, you are and, and not better wrong about that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they they definitely did. Their advertising department definitely did a good job. Actually, the advertising department is about the only department that did their job. This game was hyped up so much. The, the advertising on television, 
on all of the social media was great. The gameplay footage, great. The um, the beta worked flawlessly. In fact, it was the beta that sold me on it. And then game release, and we just started going downhill ever so slowly. But let's start with content. I, I mean, in all honesty, outside of this initial wow factor, there is there is very little story content. What do you guys think? I'm the same way. I, I always had a problem with how little of actual content that there was that it, it basically gives you this four and a half, five hour story and is like, okay, here's the campaign. Even though this is a co-op game, we're going to give you a very short amount of story. And then we're throwing you right into the grind. And it's, a, and we're going to touch on this later, but it's a grind that doesn't go anywhere. There's no real end game content for you to be like, I'm grinding for this. Go ahead. I found your content. It's in Destiny 1. No shit. I do. <laughs> I'm get a PS3 at some point, and I'm sitting there going, you know what? I could get Destiny 1. And I've, I've thought about it. I've actually contemplated it, but it's. I, I just. Wow. Why? Why? It, it feels so lazy that it's like, here, just shove out some story content to keep them busy for a little bit, and then we'll keep them involved by just an endless grind. I I would love to know what their idea was. I, I got a better idea. How about instead of creating Destiny 2, charging people another 60 bucks... How about you just port Destiny 1 over to the PC and continue playing it? Look, WoW's been around for 16 years, so you can't tell me a video game can't last long. Destiny 1 has only been out for, what, three, four years? Mm-hmm. They, they could have easily continued Destiny 1 and just port it over to the PC with the Taken King, you know, all, all, all the extra stuff, and that's it. And I bet you we would have all been happier. Well, how about this? How about they port it over to PC, and as it's ported over, it is a massive expansion that they release for all three platforms. That way, the old players have a giant chunk of new content, and the new players, specifically the ones on PC, they get to experience all of it. I I agree. And it, it's a money grab. That's what this ends up boiling down to. But as far as mm-hmm. content goes, yep. it's it's crap. It's great gunplay with nothing to back it up. Yep, I definitely agree on all of those points. It uh, just as just as an example, like outside of the initial story campaign, like sure, we kind of we saw the story, we saw what happened to everybody, but. When it's all said and done, I really have no idea what any of the backstory for uh, Cade is, or Ikora, or um, Zavala. Like, I know nothing more about these characters than I did when I watched them in the opening trailer. You're right. And And what sucks is that they were actually quest givers in Destiny 1, or so I've been told. So if you want the backstory, you have to fucking play Destiny 1. They didn't do any tie-ins. You know, they didn't go, you know, hey, for the people who didn't play Destiny 1, or as a refresher, this is the story. This is why you should care. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. There you go. And the same, and they really, they took that same sort of aspect, and it was just, it was just washed over and applied to Curse of Osiris. We saw this really cool, um, this really cool time traveling guy who can replicate himself in, and just in Osiris, and this really cool ghost. But again, I know nothing about his character at the end of this three, four hour content expansion than I did when I first saw him, and I'm sure it's going to be the exact same way with whatever the next DLC is going to be. And that's the other thing, is that, yeah, we we were able to stretch Curse to a few hours, but to be perfectly honest, you can blast through it in an hour, because you can skip all of the mobs, except for a couple. So it's actually almost no content, and 
Osiris himself is only in it for about two and a half minutes. So there's even the character it's named after isn't even that involved. Mm hmm. Yep. You're not wrong about that. And to continue on the, the rinsing and washing aspect of it, it honestly only feels like it's a repeat of the grind that you're doing in the normal campaign in the same places. Oh, story mission on Mars. Okay. New place. Cool. Let's do a few. Let's do a mission here. Okay. Now the story takes us to EDZ. Same kind of grind. Oh, we're back to Mars for a mission. Okay, great. Now we go to, I don't even remember where else we went. We went to every place except for um, Titan. But yeah, mm -hmm. same, same MO. Okay. Yep. And it's uh, Mercury is our planet. The next one's Mars. <laughs> It's not uh, going to yes. matter. They're both going to be fucking red planets that are All just... Right. Gonna, it's actually probably just going to be a copy-pasted Mercury to Mars, and then they're just going to dial up the contrast a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just, I think the uh, <laughs> next one's Ghost of Mars or something like that. Yep. Ugh, whatever. Yep. You know, the, the real big issue that I had with Destiny 2 is the loot box. They didn't need to have them... You know, we're paying 60 bucks for a game. We're paying $32 for two expansions. Just get rid of the fucking loot boxes. Yeah. 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 It was actually, so it was, yeah, oh, go ahead. Call you. Go for it. I was going to say, hashtag remove Eververse. Like, the movement yep. is real. Like, they have, <sighs> just with EA and with Bungie doing this too, it's, it's finally hitting that that peak of everyone sitting here going, what the fuck are you guys doing? And why do you think this is okay? Mm hmm. Yep. Uh, I have. I, I it was another friend who was asking me over vacations like, hey, what is going on with Eververse? And I was like, oh, well, I mean, I, I'm assuming that it's about them locking um, existing content behind this downloadable content and all that jazz. But then when I actually looked into it I was, and realized that, oh, everybody is posting hashtag remove Eververse on the Bungie forums. Holy crap. Oh. Well, the big reason was because they do the new dawning event and in Destiny 1, you know, you would go do strikes. And you would get the new dawning gear. You would go do missions from the new dawning person and get new dawning gear. In this one, all that gear, Eververse. It's like, instead of progression, they just have loot boxes. Yeah, and this was actually a problem with the with uh, Curse of Osiris as well. Was that, and I actually got to watch some videos and read some articles on the actual breakdown of it. And it was 200 new items were released with Curse of Osiris, and half of them, literally, 100 items were in the loot boxes. So you had to pay to get the game at full price, pay to get the DLC, which is a higher price DLC than any other game on the market in years. And then you have to pay for loot boxes to get half of the items, sorry, to gamble for half of the items that are supposed to come with the DLC. And speaking of laziness, the DLC items, the exotics, I think it was 90% of them were just recycled ones, including name and look from Destiny 1. Wow. Really? That many of them? Yeah. It was, it's oh my gosh. baffling. And, and we were duped. We really were. Because, I mean, if you listen to any of our, our podcasts from before, watch any of the videos of us playing Destiny 2, we had a blast with it. And the kind of issue that we were running into was that once we got done with doing the story stuff and grinding for a while, that we kind of hit a wall because there's no content. And then we're like, but wait, because Curse of Osiris is coming out. That's going to revamp things. It's going to add more story content. And then we hit that wall too. And so it was more, I think of us wanting the game to be good or hoping that the flaws would be fixed and that 
the short amount of content was just like, it's just the base game. They're going to start filling in more story content with DLCs. And that wasn't the case. And it was just disappointment after disappointment. But I think we just kind of got trapped in our own optimism over the game. And yep. it, mm-hmm. it, it, we got suckered in with the marketing campaign and we got suckered in with the, the amazing gunplay and we got suckered in. I know Crimson did with the fucking loot boxes. Like it's, it's not a good game. And I, I but go. it, at the same time, it's a great game. It is. That's the problem. What little game there is though. It feels like if mm-hmm. it was a, a indie game, not the actual like production of it, but like the, the amount of content, it feels like it's still just a demo or a beta. What it feels like is playing poker without the face cards. <laughs> Damn. Yep. <laughs> you are That's not actually even, a pretty solid analogy. Yeah. Not even Still close to wrong. You are completely accurate. Just, it ain't no Texas Hold'em. Nope. <laughs> That's, oh my god, you're right. But it, it sucks because, you know, I played Halo back in the day, and it feels like Halo. Like, you guys get to see what Halo played like. And the gunplay, again, is great. But the thing that it's missing from Halo is all the content, all the story, all the, the actual, you know, 20 hour campaign or whatever. It's missing all that. It's missing all the stuff that made Halo great. It's missing the stuff that made Destiny 1 great. It, it's, it's, just, yeah, it, I, it's an unfinished game that's 60 bucks plus. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I definitely, I remember looking forward to the next Halo installment just for the story so I could see what happens to the Master Chief. I don't get that with Destiny 2 at all. It's it's really quite appalling, but at the same time, I have to give their marketing department, I have to give them props. They they earned their pay. Well done. Hats off to you, good, fe- to good folk. Well done. Yep. And again... You were wanting to know the story of what happened with Master Chief. You know, what's the new development? Is the Covenant coming back to kill everyone? You were you were involved in that story. But with this, like, Cade's arm got blown off at the end of Destiny 2. And nobody says a fucking word about it. Like, when you go see him in the in the tower after the game's over, he has his yeah. fucking arm back. <laughs> Yeah. Like they uh-huh. did just didn't go. They didn't even roll with it. You know, they, they didn't have it where like, oh, yeah, he's missing an arm for right now. That's why he's not out there doing missions himself. No, nothing. Just. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, it, it's it's very unfortunate. So that was the uh, the lack of content. There is definitely one of the biggest letdowns. Um, and I think I think we've all. We certainly agree with that and feel the same, right, guys? Yes. Yeah. In the yeah. end, it's just not playing with a full deck of cards, unless you want to spend ninety nine cents per loot box. Yeah. Ugh. Now, yeah. the other thing though is the content that it does have that's like extra content is so tacked on and worthless, like the adventures, patrols, just any any sort of stuff like that. It's there's no incentive to do them. Nope, none whatsoever. I mean, I remember I was trying to justify doing a little bit of the adventures, but like they the the time that it takes for what you get out of it, it was not worth it. Not at all. No. And, and that's where a yeah. lot of the st- the extra story is in the adventures, but there is zero incentive to do them. Even at the level, like when you are starting a new character, when you are leveling that character, there is zero incentive to do them because it gives you crap gear, crap XP, and it's like, no, I'll just go grind public events until I'm level 25. Like, there's no reason for any of that. And it's just it's just tacked on, worthless content that nobody plays. It, again, it's yeah. playing with without a full deck of cards. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then when you do get to that level where you switch over from max level to now you're looking at gear stats, 
in terms of your um, to that power level at that point, if you did spend time on any of those patrols or adventures, they don't, they don't help you at all. Um, they don't even help you at this level. They don't give you enough glimmer or anything to do anything with. So the, the grind is in, I feel like the grind was missed. Like you're, you're, it's a grind, but you're spinning your wheels more than you are grinding for something. Um, and, and there's really only one way to grind. It's it's like if Diablo three only had riffs, like you beat the campaign and then literally you can only do riffs, but only regular riffs, yep. not even the. There was a time Go ahead. when it didn't even have them. I remember that <laughs> time. I remember vanilla Diablo three just when it was dark. played the story yeah. over again, over and over, horrible. And over and over again. Uh, but yeah, I I remember that, and I feel like. Destiny 2, Bungie, you know, the, the companies that made Destiny 2, they either didn't look at these games and go, hey, you know what? They started off like real shitty, but then they got good. Well, why don't we start good instead of starting shitty and getting shittier? And it, like you're saying, you don't even get glimmer for any of this shit. Like there's... Just make the patrols, make the adventures, make any of that stuff give you a crap load of glimmer, and you now have people incentivized to go do them. But it's really yeah, do I public can. events. Like, there's no even real reason to go and grind out the fucking raids. Nope. Yeah. I think with this last patch, they did a few things to give you to kind of change the focus from doing public events to now doing some heroic strikes. And I kind of, I, I bid on that. I did some of the heroic strikes and, you know, they were, you know, they were fun the first several times and they gave you a, an okay amount of glimmer. I mean, on average I was getting between two and 3000, but that's not including like the 800 or so that you get for completing the challenges associated with it which was also nice to, for a little bonus there. But, I mean, outside of that, the heroic strikes are now boring because I think I can count on... I don't know if I can count it on one hand or if we're, if we're going to have to go over to two hands, but there's there's Seven Goths song, there's the two different versions where you're on Mercury, Um there is the one on EDZ, and there is, um, oh gosh, am I even going to get to five? I think there See? were five originally, and then we got two more from Curse of Osiris, and it's literally just the same fucking one. Like, you, right. we've done it, I think, four times. Like, we've done uh, a mixed bag of the two of them. I don't know which one is which. Because they're the same thing. Uh -huh. Like, I think you do slightly different things. But at the end, it's the same boss. It's really the same voiceover. Uh -huh. Like, there, I, I don't uh -huh. recognize any difference. It's, uh, you're still going through the, the, what was it, Endless Forest? Infinite Forest, yeah. In Infinite Forest. Yeah, you're still going through there. So it's just, oh, cool, here's some randomly, you know, procedural generated crap which was beautiful the first time. That's about it. But yeah, you, you've got, let's say max seven, seven heroic strikes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, there is one on IO where it, yep. the in, um, inverted spire. Okay. No. Yeah. No, inverted I think that one was is on Nessus. That's Nessus. And then yeah. The, yeah. And then the pyramidian one that other one is on io even yes. those two blend together okay yes. so what that gets us up to seven okay, okay so there you go we can count on two hands the number of heroic strikes that you can do and yep. then all the nightfall is is just a is a mutation of that yep. whoop de doo and the nightfall was honestly towards the end that was the only thing i found fun because it was like okay mm -hmm. how can we do this and even though we all had our rat kings like times three it was literally how can we do this? And if we can do it, can we still do it with five minutes on the clock? Like that was the challenge, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's shit because we were making up our own challenges for entertainment. <laughs> yep. Yes, we were. Oh and my gosh. With the yep. heroic strikes, they're just 
the same as our regular strikes, and we've been doing the regular strikes and the nightfalls. Mm -hmm. So it, it them going, hey, you can now do heroic strikes after everyone's burned out. It's like that doesn't that doesn't help us. That should have been in the base game. Mm -hmm. Yep. But it's okay, because we're going to give you a new level of grinding, because we're <laughs> going to introduce masterwork weapons. Yep, got to do those, that, what was it, heroic adventures? The only adventures you'll actually do? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. Yep, that, <laughs> that sounds about right. Uh, like, I, to me, that was one of the things that I was getting that I was looking forward to is like, Oh, okay. Masterwork weapons. I could get behind this. Um, I think of the, th maybe for the three days that I played after that was released, I only got three heroic weapons. One of them is one that I was using. Thank goodness. I disenchanted the other two and I got a masterwork core and you need 10 masterwork cores to upgrade something. So now I was just like, Nope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. I was I when I realized that after the third one, I was like, no, no, thank you. I'm I'm done with this. There's mm -hmm. enough grinding. I don't need this anymore. Um but wow. let's talk about <laughs> yeah, yeah, it it's ridiculous. I mean, I really have nothing more to say about that other than we're just adding a grind on top of a grind. Mm-hmm. And see, I never even went in for the Masterworks. I knew of them, and I knew that you had to do uh, Heroic Adventures and I think a couple of other things you could do to get the pieces for it. But I was like, I don't know what this is. I'm still trying to get my power level up to max after Curse. And grind, 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 and then I quit. But now that I know that the Masterwork was just another grind on top of the already shitty grind... And that the masterwork grind was infinitely worse and time consuming. I, I'm glad I didn't. Holy crap. Yep. And in all honesty, to get a, uh, to get a random stat boost is it's in my mind, it's not worth it for the amount of time that you have to put into it. Um, Oh, and get this, it will cost you three Masterwork cores for a reroll. What? <laughs> exactly. <sighs> yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yep. I, I need to make a, a slight comparison. Um, because, okay. it, because it's about the grind. It's about this grind that is done so poorly, and then they give us another grind that's done worse, and then you see games like Warframe that has a, a logical grind to it, that has an actual reward. That you, it, It's not a small reward. It's I'm getting resources so that I can build me a new suit, and that new suit does new things, right? Like, that's, that's real reward. You're, you're not going, yes. hey, I'm, I'm grinding away so that I can hopefully get this fucking exotic that didn't drop for the first three weeks of me playing this game. Hello, Orpheus Rig, for me and Crimson. But the... And look at the Division. The Division has that super grindiness of Diablo 3 where you're wanting specific roles and specific stats on your items. You don't need them. You do not need them. But if you want to okay. play the super high difficulties, you can try to min-max in that game. You don't have to, but you can. And it has the recalibration station where you can re-roll your items. It has the, um, the optimization station where you spend uh, a very hard-to-get resource on not re-rolling, but gently upgrading items. And I think you can do that five times per item to like max it out. But it has a reward. It has a reward. When you go out and do stuff, you get resources. You get to go spend those resources. We've been max level for a day now, and I can already go buy an exotic item, which is the highest rarity. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, that, that's the... And I can go buy it from the in-game shop. I can buy the yeah, one the I want. 
Uh huh. You've put the time and effort to get to that stage, and now you have the op. You have unlocked the option to get what you need instead of leaving it up to chance. Yes. And see, this is the way that they did it, and I, I, I love it because they did the same thing that Destiny Two did, which is once you hit max level, whenever you would level, you get a loot box, basically. But the loot box is gear. It's always gear, and I think it's always better. It's almost like a luminous Ingram in Destiny. But the thing is, is that it also gives you Phoenix credits, and Phoenix credits are what give you, uh, or you spend Phoenix credits to buy exotic weapons, set items, stuff like that from the in-game stores, uh, blueprints for exotic items, set items, and and all that stuff. Just all the end-game stuff is done with Phoenix credits, but you get Phoenix credits from doing dailies, weeklies, opening loot boxes when you level up, that sort of stuff. But it takes. I think uh, it takes 120 to get an exotic item. And I had 99 last night and we hit max level last night and you don't get them until you hit max level. That's the kind of reward that I want to see in destiny where I can sit there and go. And we've talked about this till today's end where I do the work let me pick the fucking reward. <laughs> like, you've got randomized loot boxes and randomized loot and randomized other loot and randomized other loot. There is no just, hey, that item dropped for me. And, or I'm going to farm this so that I can get this specific item or the currency so I can buy that item. And Yeah, that's what I really do- like. Oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, but that's what that's, you know. The division has been around for about two years now, I think, maybe a little over. And Warframe's been out since 2013. Yeah, well, it's almost five years old, and it knows how to do this shit. It is now mm-hmm, 2018, yeah. and we still haven't figured out this formula. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, loot boxes are bad. Loot boxes are bad, but also just the fact that rewards don't exist in these games. Mm-hmm. It, yep. It, it's just a grind for random. It's it's a it's a it's a, a gamble. It's a slot machine for time, and it's a slot machine for cash. Yeah. yeah, and you know, there are games that do that just well. Look at Diablo. It is a loot pinata gambling, you know, you kill a boss over and over and over and over. But you know what? It's still fun because guess what? When you kill the boss, you are getting items. It may not be the item you're looking for, but you're getting some items. Yep. And then, you know, it's still rewarding you even when you don't get what you're looking for. Yeah. It's... These games need to either... You can't just hide it behind loot boxes. You can't hide them behind engrams. Yep. You know, the the Orpheus rig. I I did finally get the Orpheus rig. Oh, did you? The last day I played, oh I got the Orpheus rig. <laughs> Never even got to use it. Uh, I, got, I got the Orpheus rig and the Crimson on the last day. Oh, my Oof. God. Those were are you saying you, you those literally the got two the two items? Yeah. You, yep. you literally, literally got, got the two items I was waiting for. Yep. And that was the same day I quit. Now imagine, if you will, a world where if you're playing Destiny 2 and you're max level, right? And let's say you go and you do a couple of public events and you get a new currency. And after, I don't know, four or five public events, eh, maybe not, maybe maybe three hours of public events, just farming. You can go buy the Orpheus rig. Like, that's how it should have been in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. And I just, how I get it. I get it. I really do. They, they went with what was popular loot boxes and random loot, because how can you go? I have no content for this game, but we need people to play it and give us money. You make the grind random. You don't let people choose the rewards they want because then they get it too quickly and then they have nothing to work for. But if you go for three weeks not getting the exotic that you want or more, four, five weeks, 
you become discouraged and don't want to play the game anymore, but you still are working for that item. Yep. And I've, uh, I, I think after hearing you guys share those stories whilst we, when we were still playing, you know, it's, it's just that it's really discouraging. And to look back in hindsight now and see so many other games that have taken this mechanic of rewarding people for their work. And it, honestly, destiny two has really been kind of a slap in the face disguised behind those loot, this loot box system, which I also want to point out very is coming under very heavy fire with a ruling that the um, gaming, the Belgian gaming commission passed down. They actually said that this is a form of gambling and it needs to be addressed and people are companies and other commissions are following suit. So as a side note, that's something to keep a very close eye on in the continued future. Um, So yeah, Uh, we're definitely going to be seeing a shift away from that business model, I think, but back to really back to destiny. It's a, uh, I don't know. I kind of lost where I was going with that. So I'm just going to stop talking because I really, yeah, <laughs> that, that's all I got. <laughs> well, and, it's and that I think bad. the, the biggest problem, I think it, honestly, the biggest problem for all three of us, and I don't want to speak for you guys, but with talking to you guys tonight and just through the entire time that we've been playing destiny, I feel like the biggest problem really was that our expectations were so high and they didn't deliver on a fourth of it. It, it really was a, just a disappointment when it came to content and at a $60 price point, that's kind of the takeaway. They have it, all the controversies lumped in. Just the loot box bullshit, the um, capping uh, experience, the uh, we actually didn't even really touch on the fact that they gated content from the base game behind the DLC paywall. The, they did nothing but fuck over their players, fuck over their players, fuck over their players, and then fuck over their players again. And they 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 did the exact same thing that everybody does in this situation. Every company and everybody who fucks up in a public space like this. Look at PewDiePie and Logan Paul and some of those. That I'm sorry we did this and it was wrong. We'll never do it again. And then they go, oh, by the way, you can't do Heroic Strikes, you can't do Nightfalls, you can't do the Raid, unless you buy the DLC. And then it exploded again. Everybody was pissed. And then they're like, oh, oh, we're sorry, we're sorry, it won't happen again. Oh, there's uh, pay-to-win shit in the loot boxes now, and all the items are gated behind the loot boxes. All the holiday stuff is in loot boxes. How many times do they have to fuck people over and apologize for it and say and lie that it's never going to happen again before it actually gets fixed? Or they just do it again and put a bow on it and say, oh, this is something nice and new. Not. Yeah, but it, it that's yeah. yeah, that's where we're at now is that <laughs> they're they're the abusive ex-boyfriend. Like, they're literally the ones who sit there and say, I'm doing these bad things, but it won't happen again. And then they come right back and do it again. At some point, you have to hold them accountable because I'll be honest, I want to play Destiny 2. I mean, I really do. I want to go go play Destiny 2, but it won't hold them accountable. And we are seeing online, we are definitely seeing a huge numbers drop in Destiny 2. And the only way to make these companies change their mind is to hit them where it hurts, their pocketbook. Yep. And I do want to point out that, again, like Diablo 3, it didn't start great. And then with Reaper of Souls, it fixed so many things and the game became good. Very good. Yeah. The division. Who knows? Maybe after Ghost of Mars, maybe we have a third expansion and it's a Taken King style expansion. You know, yeah, this, that this whole shake it. up. Great. I'll come back when you fix your game. Yeah. 
You know, I'm not saying I won't come back. I'm just saying I'm not willing to give you my money or my time right now. Exactly. And The Division was the same way. The Division launched as a flop. It was a garbage fucking game. And now so many people love that game because they have fixed the problems. And so I hope, I hope that Destiny 2 does that. But it's going to be a long ways down the road because there's still a lot of fucking people over to do. And I will say that is a very um, Ubisoft thing. Usually Ubisoft has a tendency to bring out their games a little too early and fix them over the course of the time. Look at Ghost Recon. Look at uh, the, uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six The Siege. You yep. know, that is considered one of the best, most solid first-person shooter games in the world right now. Mm-hmm. But it started out shitty yep. because that's kind of how Ubisoft does their games. And this is why most people don't buy Ubisoft games in the first year they come out. Yeah, And now I hope that Bungie will stop fucking around and pull an Ubisoft. But I, I just, I don't have a lot of hope. I know that, you know, we were super optimistic about this game. It's even when we were playing it, even when, you know, shit was starting to hit the fan. But I just... I my optimism's gone. Yeah, definitely mine too. Um, I think I'm definitely of the same opinion as at least Crimson. I'm going to let this one bake at 400 for a couple for six months or more, and then we'll revisit it and see, or I will revisit it and see what happens. But uh, I'm yeah. I'm the same way. I'm going to keep it installed and updated. I I paid for the next DLC, so I'm going to play the DLC. And then if it's the same shit as Curse was, I'll probably uninstall it. And if they mm. fix the game later on, it's still on my account. I'll reinstall it later. Yep. Honestly, I the the things that I enjoyed about this game are, per, for me personally, the artwork, um, the voice acting was great, the scenery is awesome. We Caleb, we well, we've all mentioned that the gunplay is awesome. And um, just kind of uh, th- those are the small things, though, kind of the aesthetics and a little bit of the feel. Those were the things that were fun about it. And I, when I was finally able to start playing with you guys, I had a blast playing with a team and with a crew and my friends. That's That was the best time that I had with this game. But when things went south, and I started doing events by myself to uh, to kind of further my own kind of my own thing off to the side. It it lost its appeal, and as we've said with all of our grievances, it's to the point where you know I'm just kind of I'm done with it. And it That's really it was is. great playing with you guys. Like I had the most fun when it was the three of us doing content. Mm-hmm. But like yeah. you said, once you get past that point, once you're playing either by yourself or not all your friends are on, or you just kind of run out of content or get burned out, then that feeling goes away. But I will actually say this is how Destiny 2 feels. It feels like an early access title. That's Mm. that's what it feels like to me. It feels like it's a game that's in alpha or beta that isn't finished. Yep, I definitely agree with that. Um, I think definitely some of the lessons learned just kind of do our research um, and Never I guess kind of a game ever again. Yeah, I'm. No, uh, yeah, you're not wrong about that. And we all three <laughs> of us did. <laughs> yep. I know. Yep, and that's that's what irritates me the most is we were we were duped and they did a good job of it, but. Do your research. Be hesitant about jumping into a new game um, at the very beginning. And just kind of look for those hidden gems that are already out there in existence. You've mentioned The Division. We've talked about Warframe. We've talked about uh, Diablo. You know, there's other great games that are out there. You don't have to have the shiny new thing all the time. Especially when you... That's the worst thing. Go ahead. Is, is, Is this game... You know, you do the research and you see Destiny 1 and, you know, 
the, this game had the backing of Destiny 1, and they just dropped the ball. Agreed. And that's that's really where another big chunk of disappointment comes from, is that you hear the praise of how good Destiny 1 was towards the end, and it's like, okay, Destiny 2 has to be better. It's just going to be bigger, better, badder. Well, the better part was right, but that that <laughs> yeah, like that yeah, that's where a lot of the disappointment comes in. And again, we've talked about the marketing and, and the hype and everything. But really, when you do your research on Destiny 2 or on any game that's coming out, it, it's tough because I don't want to say, don't go play Destiny 2, don't go buy it. But this is where you guys get to hear our experiences with the game. And then you get to decide. But I would hate for somebody to do what we did, which is we had the division. We always had access to Warframe. We own Diablo. You know, we own a lot of these shoot and loots or, or dungeon crawler games. And we spent over 60 bucks on the game, plus the DLCs, plus loot boxes, plus whatever. And then we're going right back to those games. The ones who have been around for a couple of years who have in, evolved into incredible games. So you may be one of those people who spends, you know, hundred plus dollars on a game like destiny and then goes right back to the $20 game because it's better. So I agree, RJ it's, it's about research and not jumping head first on something pretty. Mm-hmm. Yep. I definitely agree. Well, whew, that has been, is, this has been a journey. Um, Damn. So anyway, I, th- I think I've said, and I think we've all said our piece on destiny Two this week and the past several weeks. So, um, that's, that's that. Definitely. Well, as always, thanks everyone for listening and thanks for being patient with us during the holidays and our crazy schedules, but you are welcome to check out our previous episodes at MediocreGamers.com, as well as on iTunes and Google Play. Keep up to date with us on Facebook and Twitter at Two Mediocre Gamers, and you can chat with us on Discord at Discord.MediocreGamers.com. Just accept the invite. You'll be in. Chat with us, play games with us, whatever. Uh, check out our YouTube page where our gameplay videos and stuff are, and that's going to be, we have a link on our Facebook page and on our website. Uh, and lastly, we do have a Reddit page up. It is Reddit slash R slash MG cast. Um, well, I'm Caleb. I'm RJ. I'm Crimson. And until next time, get out there and play some games. <laughs>